Hi and welcome to another episode of PeaceMeg TV. In this week's WordPress video, we're going to be taking a look at static or global layers in Slider Revolution 5. Now, I touched upon static layers in a previous video, and I'll link that in the description below so you can check that out after we've covered this. But what I want to do in this video is I want to go through and explain in a little bit more detail and show you how global layers really can speed up the process of creating your sliders in Slider Revolution 5. So let's take a look at how we can do that now. So to access the static or global layers option, we first need to create a slider in Slider Revolution 5. Now I've done that in many videos before and I've got an introduction video that'll take you through if you're not accustomed to how you create your sliders in Slider Revolution. But we've done that already and once you create your slider and you set up some basic elements such as the name and choosing what type of slider you want, you'll then come into the slide editor and that's where we are now. So if you take a look at the top of the screen, you'll see we've got static and global layers. Next to that, we have the three slides that I've got in my slider at the moment. Now these are very, very basic, but if we take a look at the static and global layers option, if I click on this, that will open up a drop down list. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to choose any of the slides we have in our slider to use as a reference. So if we scroll down underneath, you'll see at the moment I've got a couple of elements on there. I've got this semi transparent strip and I've got two text blocks or two text items, but nothing else. So I don't really know how these are going to interact with the slider when we actually create it. So if I come back up to this section, you can see I can choose any of the slides that have been named in my slider setup. So let's go for lenses in this example. And that will automatically load in that slide into the slide editor below so we can see exactly what everything is going to look like on one of our slides and obviously if you want to come back and change that to choose a different one just to ensure it looks good on all of them we can easily do that from the drop down list so as you can see everything now looks like a normal instance of slider revolution but what this does is this allows us to create layers that are going to be active on every single slide in our slider so you can see I can easily come in and add new layers. We can put audio in there. We can choose images and choose those from our document setup. So I could choose this one, for example, and insert that. And there we go, exactly as you expect. I can click on there and I can delete it. I can copy it. You know, all the normal things you're expecting to do. But like I say, these have the added benefit of the fact that they're going to be on every single slide. So for this example, you can see where we've got this gray strip at the top, we're emulating a navigation bar with these links on the right hand side. So we'd want that to be at the top of every single slide in our slider. And this is a very quick and easy way of doing it. So you can see this is just an ordinary semi transparent element. It's just a, a shape layer. And we've set up some of the parameters on there like you'd normally expect to do. So you can see the background color set, the transparency levels are set, all very, very good. But we've got a couple of other options that are specific to working with global layers as opposed to just adding them to every single slide. What we've got is we've got the static layers overflow section. And what that allows us to do is anything that goes past the viewpoint, how do we want to deal with it? So we've got two options. We can say we want to make it hidden or we want to make it visible. So anything that sort of falls at the viewpoint will be hidden or visible, depending on what option you choose there. We've also got the static layers tab. So if I click and expand that, you can see that we can now control exactly what slides this is going to be displayed on. So you can see that this particular element, we say start on slide one, so the first slide in our slider, but we can tell it to end on slide two or three or four, however many slides you've got on there, or we can say last slide. So that will infinitely loop. So every time it goes around, it'll get to the end of our sliders and then it'll go back and start at the first slide again. So it'll be a seamless integration. But if we didn't want that on every single slide, we can easily just choose what slide we want it to start on and what slide we want it to stop on. So a very, very easy thing to do there. So by using these elements, we could very quickly and easily build up a really interactive slider. We can specify buttons, for example, or we might want to have a message on every single slide that we want to do the same thing. So instead of to recreate that time and time again, we can literally add it via this method. And every single item you have, you can see if I choose desk, for example, which is just a text layer, you can see now I can choose exactly when these will be displayed, the to and from points. The same with the lenses. So any item I place on here, I can easily come in and say I'll put a button and we'll choose this option, for example. So I've got all the normal controls. So I can come in and I can change my actions. So I can apply actions to this. So I can say on click, what do I want to do? Well, we say we'll jump to the next slide, for example. And we'll set a 10 millisecond delay from that happening. 
we can now say that we want that to be on every single slider or we might say we don't want that on the last one because it wouldn't have any relevance for example so we could then come up to this and we say we want it to start on slide one but we want it to end on slide two and if we save that and I'll just go and load in a temporary page so we can take a look at that in action so you can see exactly how this will only be available on the first and second slides and the third slide it'll disappear so as you can see there's our button so if I click it'll take us to the next slide if I click it'll take us to the third slide and disappears and then we click the arrow to go back to the first slide it's back again so you can see we can very easily build up quite a nice level of interaction and we can control when different elements are going to be displayed and we can even control those on the global level so that's really all there is to global or static layers it's a very powerful feature for repeating elements that you don't want to have to go through the process of adding to every single slide in your slider well, I hope you found this video useful. I hope it's given you an insight into how you could use these in your sliders. If you did find it useful, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else covered on the channel, please pop those in the comments section below. And until next time, take care.